the BJP's Gujarat list reflects Prime Minister Modi's choices. New faces, veterans dropped, winnability the key factor. Two BJP ex-chief ministers out of the ticket race. An ex-MLA who rescued people in the Morbi bridge collapse gets a ticket. And cricketer Jadeja's wife gets a ticket. He thanks the Prime Minister and the Home Minister. Two businessmen arrested by the Enforcement Directorate in a Delhi liquor case. Orbindo Pharma's director, Sarath Reddy, arrested. Also, Binoy Babu of Pernod Ricard arrested. Orbindo Pharma stock slides 11%. Orbindo Pharma says arrest not connected with us. Nine Indians killed in a fire in the capital of the Maldives, Mali. The Indians killed were all migrant workers. The rooms they were staying in were apparently small, cramped and poorly ventilated. Why hasn't actor Jacqueline Fernandez been arrested? If you issued a lookout notice, a Delhi court asked the enforcement director during a bail hearing. Don't use a pick and choose policy, says the court. The enforcement director argues against her bail, saying she's a flight risk. But Jacqueline Fernandez argues, I'm a victim of conspiracy. Just hours to go, comedian Veer Das's show cancelled in Bengaluru, which was tonight. Over 2,000 tickets were sold out but cancelled over fringe group uh, threats. Ticket holders are turned back, but this is Veer's video response. Ex-President Trump apparently livid with the US results with no red wave emerging for Republicans. And now a potential 24 contender for Trump emerges, a new Republican star, Ron DeSantis. And Lalu Prasad Yadav's daughter Rohini will donate a kidney to her ailing father. She says, I'm Destiny's child. I'm proud to give my kidney to Papa. So it wasn't Team India's day today, but of course for fans, it was heartbreak as everyone becomes an instant cricket expert. But after all, even though it's extremely disappointing, Team India will fight back another day. Yeah, we lost the match. Did you, did you guys see the match? We watched the match. The whole yeah, match. yeah, the India lost the match by 10 wickets. Uh, the India lost the match. They didn't play as well today as they have done before. And England were lucky that their two opening batsmen were so brilliant today. But we'll see what happens on Sunday. Hopefully. Yeah, we'll see what happens on Sunday. But, uh, at the last, it's just a game, you know. One team wins and the other Every loses. Yeah. Every game can be different. It, it's the way it goes. Thank you. Honestly, uh, disappointment the kafi hai. Hamne fight utni nahi kari. Thoda aur lard sakte the. But uh, I think itna dur ponche wo achhi baat hai. But ham jeet sakte the. I think bahut one sided tha and uh, very disappointed like Isha said. Uh, I think team selection could have been better. We could have played with Chahal instead of Ashwin. That, that's my thought. And Ashwin Patel. Yeah. Anji, what happened in the match? We had a lot of hope. Yeah, it was a lot of hope. I played a lot of cricket. So, if you win the first over, if you win the first over, you can't win the first over. And you should have a leg spinner. You should have a leg spinner. You should have a leg spinner. I think England had a lot of planning. Zero planning, I would say. Well, let's go across to the other big championship, and that's, of course, Indian elections. There's always some exciting Indian state election looking forward to, and Gujarat is especially important, isn't it, Ankit? Because, of course, this is the Prime Minister's home state, the Home Minister's home state, and I think the list had that stamp of Prime Minister Modi on it. What are the highlights? And that is exactly, and that is exactly what we saw also yesterday when the Prime Minister was with the election committee meeting at the BJP headquarters. It was his final stamp of approval. Few surprises there, uh, uh, Sonia. The Morbi uh, MLA, in fact, uh, who is also a sitting minister, has been dropped. So a clear impact of Morbi has been seen on this list. The former MLA, who, whose visuals of jumping into the river and trying to save people uh, made him a hero, he has been given the ticket. And the other one, which you are seeing on your screens right now, is of course a surprise inclusion from Jamnagar North. This is Ravi Jadeja. She is the wife of uh, current Indian cricket team uh, uh, cricketer Ravindra Jadeja. Uh, and uh, she also has been given the ticket. 38, and I'm repeating that, 38 sitting MLAs, their uh, tickets have been dropped. That also includes uh, the former 
chief minister and the deputy chief minister and apart from that only 69 uh, you know candidates have been repeated hardik patel who switched from congress uh, to the bjp has been given a ticket from uh, the viramgram constituency which is his home turf but uh, seven other congress turncoats who for the 2017 election of the congress ticket have been given the ticket by the bharatiya janata party overall the bjp 160 candidates going in for the winability factor trying to cull the uh, the in the you know the instability and also the anti incumbency by getting new faces The deliberations went on till late last night. None other than the Prime Minister spearheading and giving his final stamp of approval for the first list of the BJP candidates for the Gujarat elections. The announcement this morning of 160 of 182 candidates by the BJP in Gujarat was packed with surprises. Ghat Lodiya, Shri Bhupendra Singh, Bhupendra Bhai Patel, Manne Mukhya Mantri Ji, Jamnagar Uttar. Rivaba Ravindra Singh Jadeja The impact of Morbi tragedy clearly visible as BJP dropped sitting MLA and Minister Bijesh Mehra in favor of ex MLA Kantilal Amrutia for his reported heroism during the bridge collapse incident Chief Minister Bhupendra Patel has been repeated from the Ghatloria constituency of Ahmedabad while Home Minister Harsh Sanghavi has been fielded from Majura not only congress import hardik patel who has been fielded from his home turf of viramgram several turn coats have been given the ticket by the bjp one interesting name in the list is of raviva jadeja wife of cricketer robindra jadeja who has got the ticket from north jamnagar constituency the cricketer was quick to congratulate his wife while expressing his gratitude to the prime minister on twitter केंद्र का हमारा जो नेतृत्व संभाल रहे हैं हमारे माननीय प्रधानमंत्री मोदी जी अमित शाह साहब जेपी नड्डा साहब साथ पर साथ गुजरात का जो नेतृत्व गुजरात की जो कमान संभाल रहे हैं भूपेंद्र पटेल साहब सी आर पाटिल साहब इवन जामनगर का जो हमारा संगठन का नेतृत्व है उनका मैं तय दिल से आभार व्यक्त करती हूँ In an attempt to cull the anti-incumbency, the party has replaced as many as 38 sitting MLAs and has also denied tickets to former Chief Minister Vijay Rupani and Deputy Chief Minister Nitin Patel. Sources have informed NDTV that the BJP will fight the election on the face of Prime Minister Modi. The strategy of the BJP which has remained in power for the last 27 years in Gujarat has been carefully crafted around the Prime Minister. The Prime Minister campaign will begin on November 17th and will last 7 to 8 days. Prime Minister campaign will cover 150 constituencies. You BJP's Gujarat chief minister face will continue to be current chief minister Bhupendra Patel. Senior leaders like JP Nadda, Rajnath Singh, Yogi Adityanath and Amit Shah will also campaign in Gujarat. It's an unprecedented list because the entire cabinet chief minister onwards have been replaced by the Bharatiya Janata Party. There are massive celebrations going on. So well going from Gujarat Ankit across to what's become a very interesting battle suddenly that's in Uttar Pradesh the by elections coming up uh, well not far also on the 5th of December the same day as the second phase of Gujarat That's right and the results would also be on the 8th of December along with the Gujarat and Himachal Pradesh uh, elections with the most important uh, factor the pocket borough of the Samajwadi party Manpuri which uh, the seat was uh, in fact vacant after the demise of uh, party patriarch and senior leader Mulayam Singh Yadav Akhilesh Yadav's wife and Mulayam Singh Yadav's daughter in law has been given the ticket to contest from this uh, constituency uh, which is a stronghold of the OBC and the Yadav maximum votes uh, there and also some pockets of the uh, Muslim votes which are uh, seen to be uh, you know quite favorable as far as the Samajwadi party is concerned important factor for dimple jadav who lost the 2019 election while she was in fact the 
joint candidate of the BSP and the Samajwadi Party. She lost that election in the Modi wave against the BJP leader. But at least at this time, the Samajwadi Party would be hoping not only will they be able to retain uh, this stronghold, but also have a big margin. There is sympathy factor for Mulayam Singh Yadav as well. Right, so another fascinating election going to be happening there, Ankit. But let's go across the breaking news coming in from the south with the Kerala government acting against the governor. Now, is this legal? Uma has the latest. Uma, this is the middle of a fascinating standoff between uh, three governors, three governors and three state chief ministers in the south. Yes, indeed. In Kerala, in fact, the Kerala government had brought in an ordinance yesterday saying that they want to remove the governor from the post of chancellor in all the universities. And law minister Rajivi, in fact, gave an explanation saying that we are not trying to curtail the powers of the governor because we know that we don't have the power to do that. He's a constitutional authority, but they, he insisted that appointment of a chancellor is something that can be done uh, by the state legislature, by the cabinet, and that it is within their purview to do that. And they had drafted an ordinance and that was going to be sent to the governor who in fact in the evening held a press conference where he said that there is no way I'm going to do this because I believe that uh, the governor should be the chancellor and there should be accountability and he uh, in fact accused the LDF government of making political appointments and so on but today what the Kerala government did was to amend the rules of one university the Kerala uh, Kalamandalam and said that uh, we are going to appoint now, now the chancellor will be a person of eminence from the field of art and culture and therefore the governor Governor ceases to be the chancellor of this particular university and they are pointing out that the sponsor of the university is allowed to do that. Sponsor happens to be the Kerala government and therefore they are within their right to do that. So yes, so, Kerala is playing out in uh, this manner while in Tamil Nadu and uh, Telangana again another story following of this kind of a standoff. Right and this of course as the Prime Minister is on his uh, tour of South India from tomorrow. So let's see how the politics there plays out. Uma, thanks so much for that. And meanwhile, the enforcement directorate has made two arrests in the Delhi liquor case, arresting two major businessmen from or Bindo Farmers, managing director Sarath Reddy and also Binoy Babu of Pernod Ricard. The ED has arrested both of them, saying that they're involved in this. So far, their lawyers have not reacted to NDTV, but the companies have issued statements saying that this has nothing to do with their business operations. But or Bindo Pharma has been hit with shares dropping 11%. Arvind, what are the latest details you have on this? So near the enforcement directorate arrested uh, two important businessmen connected, allegedly connected to this daily excess policy, one Sharath Reddy of Aravindo Pharma and also Binai, uh, Binoy uh, Baby, so uh, Binai Babu. So what uh, sources in the enforcement directorate say that during the course of the investigation that they got to know that uh, Sharath Reddy uh, through his uh, group companies in fact controlled almost five retail zones in the daily excess policy whereas the excess policy clearly states that an entity cannot be given more than two uh, uh, retail licenses but in the case of Sharath Reddy, he was controlling almost five retail licenses and the agency sources also maintain that he actually controlled almost 30% of the entire liquor sale in the state of mm -hmm. uh, Delhi and that's what they have informed the court also. Very importantly, the enforcement directorate also informed the court almost 100 crore uh, was collected by uh, Sharath Reddy and it was transferred as kickbacks to several uh, political executives or public officers through uh, Vijay Nair according to the enforcement directorate. They also say that almost 140 mobile phones were changed by all these 34 individuals who are involved in this particular case but and that's where the agency said that only because of that the agency had to arrest all these two guys right now of course uh, this has to be held up as you said this is what the enforcement director is claiming at this point we haven't heard from their lawyers yet but let's see how this unfolds as we said two major businessmen being arrested there by the enforcement directorate. The other big news, well, the Indian markets today slid by nearly 1% with global concerns on the rise. The Sensex down by 419 points. The Nifty falling 128 points. This as investors are tracking US midterm results and global inflation. The rupee also weakened 38 paise, closing at 81, paise, 81 rupees, 81 paise to the dollar. But here's the big news coming from the US markets. The U.S. inflation latest results have fallen to 7.7% from U.S. inflation. U.S. markets jumping after, the infl after inflation dipped. The Dow has now rallied 700 points. The U.S. inflation rate lowest since January. And this is dipping for the fourth straight month. So markets are soaring. U.S. markets on lower than expected inflation numbers. The dollar also falling 1% after that fall in inflation. So the impact of those U.S. inflation numbers likely to be felt in Indian markets also tomorrow. 
And uh, next coming news, tragic news from the Maldives when nine Indians are feared dead in a fire in the Maldives capital of Mali. Maldives officials say 10 bodies have been retrieved of which nine are likely to be Indians. All of these 10 people killed were migrant workers. The fire swept through the lodgings of these foreign workers. So far reports say that nine Indian nationals and one Bangladeshi are among the dead. Again, reports say that the rooms in which they are living were extremely uh, cramped, small, poorly ventilated. So raising the focus once again on the actual conditions in which workers like from South Asia, Indians are actually living in when they go to work abroad. coming up there from showing those tragic fire in which nine Indians were killed. Fernandez story today actor Jacqueline Fernandez appeared in court for her hearing. She's arguing for bail but the court asked the enforcement director which is opposing the bail why is it that they haven't arrested her when they actually issued a lookout circular. The enforcement directorate today opposed bail for Bollywood actress Jacqueline Fernandez in a Delhi court, alleging that the actress is flight risk and if granted bail, she might flee the country. But the Delhi court also grilled the enforcement directorate over why it had not arrested the actress during the investigation but was now opposing her bail. And how come she wasn't arrested but other co-accused are in jail? The enforcement directorate accuses Jacqueline Fernandez of aiding money laundering by conman Sukesh Chandrasekhar. Sukesh allegedly extorted over 200 crore from former Ranbaxy promoter's family. Jacqueline Fernandez, according to the ED, received cash and gifts worth over 7 crore from Sukesh Chandrasekhar. The ED also says that money was transferred to family members of Fernandez outside India. The ED accuses that Fernandez a Sri Lankan citizen may flee India. The Enforcement Directorate in its investigation into the 200 crore extortion case against conman Sukesh and the Shekhar has charge sheeted Fernandez as an accused. Jacqueline Fernandez argued that she is a victim of Sukesh and the Shekhar's con job and that Sukesh impersonated as owner of Sun TV and nephew of former Tamil Nadu Chief Minister Jay Lalita. According to Jacqueline Fernandez, she got to know about the extortion only after Delhi police arrested Sukesh. Jacqueline Fernandez says that knowingly she didn't aid Sukesh in the money laundering. The Delhi court which is trying Jacqueline Fernandez in the alleged money laundering case will give its order on her bail plea on Friday. With camera person Pujaria, this is Arvind Gunaseka for NDTV. Moving across to the other big headline tonight, well, just hours before a show was scheduled in Bengaluru by well-known comedian Veer Das, it was cancelled after threats by right-wing groups. This is over 2,000 tickets were already sold. The police say they don't know about it. It was a decision by the organisers. But here's what Veer Das actually put out as his response to all these threats and cancellations that he gets. This video is probably never going to make on the internet. <laughs> So basically what happens is a lot of times when a comedy show gets, uh, you know, shut down or, you know, another stuff happens, is because people make assumptions about what happens at the show. Um, and nobody ever checks with the audience what happened at the show. So, you know, this is an audience that has just seen a show. Now. If you're a woman, please make some noise. 
If you are a man, please make some noise. Did we target any specific religion here tonight? No. Did we target any specific government or leader here tonight? No. Did this show defame India or make you feel ashamed to be an Indian? No. Did this show make you proud to be an Indian? Just trust the audience. That's comedian Veer Das's message after his show got cancelled today in Bengaluru over some fringe group threats. Here's what those who actually bought tickets paid money to see this show said because they turned up at the venue. They had no idea that it had been cancelled. No, I'm, I'm still trying to figure it out. He said refund mil jayega. So I'm just like, how much did you pay for the ticket? We paid quite a bit. Yeah. How much is it? <laughs> it's just quite a bit. Let's just keep it at that. I mean, it was in the papers and I'm pretty sure it's about all of the comments that he'd made. Yeah. Allegedly. The yeah. content essentially that is there in the stand-up is mm. not for the taste that is required for the Bangalore crowd, I guess. <laughs> According to sources. I think it's honestly really sad. It's a comedy show out of all the things. Why would you want to cancel that? True. I mean, yeah. Yeah, I, mean I guess it comes down to essentially how people perceive the freedom of speech here. Okay. And how things are going to be taken by different parts of the community so honestly I have the privilege to not be so much affected by the thoughts and radical you know movements or etc for the lack of a better word different agendas that are there but at the end of the day yeah, as a visitor as a fan of Veerdas and yeah, as the show being cancelled it's just a it's just sad we just came here with some hope to have a few laughs have a good evening and then move out for the weekend and Bangalore traffic <laughs> and Bangalore. how did you learn that it's cancelled uh, we got a mail from Book My Show and we saw it on uh, Veer Das's Instagram. Instagram story. Like, yeah. is it after you reached? Yeah. Sally, we were on the way <laughs> and we <laughs> saw it. So. We were too busy navigating to the location. Yeah. <laughs> so when we reached, like, wait a second, cancelled. Cancelled for no clear reason. And it's not really just about uh, fringe groups' pressure, it's also about the state ensuring the rule of law and the freedom of citizens to choose what they want to see. Meanwhile, before we end, this heartwarming story coming in of a daughter donating her kidney to help her father. In this case, the father's ex-Bihar chief minister and senior politician Lalu Prasad Yadav and his second daughter Rohini will be giving her kidney to her ailing father. She told NDTV that I am Destiny's child and proud to give my kidney to Papa. pictures of Rohini with Lalu Prasad Yadav who is being treated in Singapore for the kidney failure and hopefully will be well now after this kidney transplant from his second daughter. <laughs>